it's on. Hi, thanks for coming to the quickie session. My name is Heather Van Cura, and I'm the group manager for the Java Community Process Program Office. And today we're going to talk Adopt a JSR. So my talk is 15 minutes, and we'll focus just on Adopt a JSR. But I'll say briefly um, the Java Community Process is celebrating its 15 year anniversary in 2014. So we have lots of fun activities going on. And we've evolved ourselves over time, opening up and to being more open and transparent and accessible to the community. And Adopt a JSR is kind of an offshoot of that, a, a natural organic growth of that. And if you want to hear more about how the JCP has gone along this path of opening up, you can come to the quickie session that we have tomorrow on jcp.next at the same time at 1.35. So you can hear more about how we're evolving the JCP and bringing it into the open and jcp.next. But today we're going to talk about Adopt a JSR, which really did um, come about as a result of two prominent Java user groups, the London Java community and SoJava, based in Brazil. So about in 2012, um, about the same time as our first jcp.next JSR um, became final, uh, that was JCP 2.8, uh, where we opened up everything and um, allowed more participation without having to be able to be a JCP member, but actually access for the everyday Java developer. These two Java user groups came together and launched this initiative. It's a Java user group led initiative called Adopt a JSR, and it's um, about putting together groups of Java developers to work together on JSRs without actually having to be part of the official JSR expert groups. So it's about getting more of the millions of Java developers around the world to work together to create better standards through the Java community process before they're actually finalized um, as final releases through the JCP. So collaborating together, these Java, Java user groups work together, and we have a wiki project that's created um, on java.net uh, where you can go for full details, but I'm going to give you some highlights here. Uh, right now, in the last two years, only two years, we have 30 Java user groups from around the world that have um, joined the program and gotten involved in adopting JSRs. So we have um, Java user groups from South America, North America, Europe, Asia, as well as Africa and the Middle East. So really we've, we've grown around the world and getting lots of real world developer, developer input into the specifications. So this program's kind of started around the time of Java EE7. So the Java EE7 release was in um, mid 2013. So we had sig significant community input into Java EE7 from many of the Java user groups around the world as well as into Java SE8 earlier this year. So I've highlighted um, a few of the Java user groups here that are participating. I haven't gotten all 30 of the logos up here, but one of the things that I do as um, community manager of the JCP is highlight the work of the Java user groups and share with the community the work that people are doing, as well as working with the spec leads of the JSRs um, to um, kind of accept the feedback from the community, kind of facilitate, facilitating that as well as promoting it to the community. So some of the use cases that I picked from those 30 user groups that um, contributed significantly to Java E7 and Java SE8 uh, was uh, BJUG, which is fitting. So Johan Voss developed an application, a tic-tac-toe application using the Java API for WebSocket, which was part of the Java EE7 release. Uh, it's a tic-tac-toe game, which actually was included in the uh, sample applications with the Java EE7 SDK. So that was a significant contribution and the London Java community nearby uh, also uh, had significant contributions into the Java SE 8 platform release um, most significantly through JSR 310 which was co-led with Stephen Colburn who's um, a member of the London Java community as well as many hack days um, and evangelism events around JSR 335 Lambda expressions with the London Java community. Multitude of hack days as well as some, a bunch of activities around OpenJDK. And in Brazil, the same thing. So since they're non-English speakers, many activities evangelizing and translating materials and collecting the feedback from the developers in Brazil to feedback into the spec leads for several of the Java EE7 JSRs as well as the Java, Java SE8 JSRs. 
So this session is, you know, how to adopt a JSR today. So this slide here um, really tells you how to get started, what you would want to do if you want to adopt a JSR. The first step is you can join the JCP as a Java user group. You can join the Adopt a JSR project next, which is on java.net. Uh, join the project and then subscribe to the mailing list. The links are here. There's a wiki there where you can indicate your interest in particular JSRs, and then you can go ahead and communicate directly with the, the lead for that project, JSR, and mail the members of your user group to gather interest among them and identify some areas that you might want to work on. And then we ask you to share your progress with us. It seems Twitter is an efficient place to share that uh, feedback as well as on the mailing list, uh, update other Java user groups around the world on what you're doing um, with the hashtag adopt a JSR. And really what we found through this experience of the two major releases in the two years is it really is a two-way street. As I mentioned before, it takes um, the leader of the Java user group as well as the leader of the specification to work together. And so I asked some of our spec leads and Java user group members to share with us some of their lessons learned that we can share with the community and just from a high level. Um, some of the things that the adopters shared with me, so these are the Java user group leaders who are trying to get actively involved in the JSR without actually being on the expert group. And um, kind of the benefits that they shared with me is that you gain a lot of experience through participating in the Adopt a JSR program, knowledge of the technologies as they're being developed, experience with these technologies before they're released, as well as the opportunity to provide your feedback into how these things are developing before they've actually um, become finalized and put into products. And they've also found that this has been a great opportunity for networking both in their local community as well as with other Java user groups around the world through the wiki and the mailing list and some of the um, online meetings that we host. Um, periodically, I host online meetups for Java user groups to share their experience together. And in the end, what it really does result in is, is better standards through the result of the experience of Java user group leaders participating in Adopt a JSR. And the spec leads as kind of the receivers of this feedback, this is the adoptee experience. Um, since we, we went through this, the, the thing that we found is that spec leads really are very eager to have this input into their JSRs because when things weren't as open in the JCP, uh, it was harder to get feedback and until the JSR was further along in the process. So they've had to kind of think about breaking down things and more into just saying, give me feedback into some, um, concrete actions that people can take. So some of the things that spec leads are looking for are people to go through their public issue tracker and ensure that everything is, use cases are there, um, comments that um, around proofreading and documentation and kind of be an advocate for some of those non-supported platforms, some of the things that they're not thinking about. So those are some of the things that they would like to receive from you. And the JSRs that we have today uh, really are around Java EE8. So if you haven't seen some of the new JSRs that have been submitted to the JCP recently, earlier this year, the Java EE8 spec leads did a survey with about 4,000 responses. And they used these, uh, so, some, these responses to inform their decisions on which JSRs they were going to fi file. And they came out with these possibilities for Java EE8. And earlier this year, just a couple of months ago in September, these JSRs were submitted. The first round of these JSRs were submitted. They plan to have the final releases in 2017. But the JSRs that were submitted are here. So these are really the JSRs that you can adopt today. So these are new JSRs. We'll have more. They come through every now and then. JSRs get submitted. We'll have JSRs for Java SE 9. But right now, the ones that are here are these first eight JSRs for Java EE 8. And we have the Umbrella JSR. We have CDI 2, JSON bindings, JMX 2.1, servlet. 4, JAXRS 2.1, which is an upgrade, and MVC JSR, which is a new technology that will go into Java E8, and Java Server Faces version 2.3. Um, the JSRs that they expect to file later are on the right-hand column, so things like security and management, JSON, um, and then some updates to some of the other technologies that were included in Java E7. So those are the things that are coming up. These are some of the JSRs that you could take back to your community and see if there's interest in participating and contributing in these JSRs. 
So on the wiki, on the Adopt a JSR wiki, once you join the project, you could indicate your interest in one of these JSRs. And right now we have about 12 Java user groups already since September when these new JSRs were submitted for Java E8 that have indicated an interest in these. And sometimes they would just go ahead and select the Java E8 JSR, just to the umbrella JSR, just to indicate that there, there is an interest from that user group but maybe they don't know exactly which particular technology they might want to follow or get involved in. So that, that's helpful to go ahead and just join the project now, join the mailing list, and update the wiki with which technologies you're interested in helping with. And then I can also get in contact with you and make sure that you can connect with the spec leads. Um, so kind of some of the pointers that we have for getting involved with Adopt uh, JSR for Java E8 is to, um, the goal of the spec leads, and this is universal with, I think there's about 10 of them, I've talked to all of them, they really want to make this the most community-driven platform up, update release to date for Java EE. That really is something that they would like. So they're really anxious to have your ideas and your feedback, especially at this early stage. Um, one of the things that you can do now is enter issues into the public issue tracker. As I mentioned earlier, um, all the public issue, all the issue trackers are public, so you can view those and you can comment on the issues or you can create new issues, most of the spec leads are using a JIRA instance. Um, but every spec lead has a public issue tracker that you can get to off of jcp.org from the JSR page. Also, there's public um, discussion forums, so you can join the list or just follow it online and comment as you see, see things that you have things to share. You can just comment there. You can also use hashtag adopt a JSR there as well to let us know that you're part interested in participating in this way. As we get early versions of specifications, again, you download those and comment, or maybe there's just a particular area of a specification that you want to comment on, that's fine. You don't need to feel like you need to read the entire thing. Um, also, you can try writing sample applications as we get further down the process. So um, things like I mentioned earlier with BJUG and developing the tic-tac-toe application for WebSocket, um, that's always welcome, the sample applications from the reference implementation builds once they're there. Um, writing in a local language is something that's really a great benefit. It doesn't seem like it's a significant contribution, but it really does help to spread the word about the technology to um, Java developers that don't speak English as well as some of you may. So that's something that you can do to um, encourage more participation in your community. And a number, number of Java user groups, have I mentioned, as I mentioned, have already signed up. So you can go to the Adopt a JSR wiki to find out more about this. And um, the Glassfish Java EE team also uh, created a page with me on their actual Glassfish site. So here you can find a table as well of just the Java EE specs. If you want to take a look at that, it's glassfish.org slash adopt a JSR. And there we have the eight JSRs listed that I mentioned a few minutes ago. And then links to their JSR detail pages where where, um, there's suggested input from the spec leads. So that's on, it's called a community update tab, and there you can find um, the suggestions from the spec lead. It'll say um, suggestions for Adopt a JSR participants. And I can tell you that right now most of them do say go ahead and take a look at the JIRA issue tracker and comment um, on any issues that you think are significant. And the other thing that they're looking for is use cases for their technologies. So this is a good time to put in your use cases. They're very interested to receive many of those. So I encourage you to do that. And at the end, I'll leave you with um, some links. These, many of these were already embedded into earlier slides in my presentation, so these are the collection of the links. And this presentation will also be made available online. Um, so I will again just close with saying if you want to hear more about the JCP and our evolution and how we're evolving, um, you can come to the quickie session tomorrow, um, same time, 1.35, and Patrick Curran, who's my boss and the chair of the JCP, will be sharing with you in 15 minutes how the JCP has evolved over its life cycle as we celebrate 15 years of bringing Java into the open. So thank you for coming to my presentation today, and I'm around the rest of the day in the Hacker Garden downstairs in the back of the exhibit area. I'll be there if you want to come talk to me about how to get involved. We also have several of the spec leads down there hanging out, um, so they're eager to talk to you if um, you'd like to come meet us and have a chat. I encourage you to do so. Thank you.